lovely stuff. Mm. Actually, it's very good. Uh, completely underrated. And one way that you can make excellent use of it is to use it in a bread. Now, before you do, you've got to heat it in some way to drive off the alcohol because the alcohol will slow down all those yeasty beasties in there. So what I do is cook the oats in the stout, let them simmer, let the oats soak up all of that, and then combine it in the dough. And what it does for the bread is give you this beautiful colour on, on the outside, but still soft on the inside. It's great together and let's do it. So the oats have been in the oven for 20 minutes and after 20 minutes they've gone from a, this pale albino colour to this beautiful sort of rich bronze colour. Put them quickly into the pan. All we do is add the stout As soon as you've got the stout in there, bring the pan to the boil, turn it off, add the butter, add the honey, place all of this inside the jug with the oats and the stout, stick the lid on, leave it. You don't need to stir it and uh, the oats will thicken up. The next bit is measuring the flour, the yeast and the salt, and then just stir everything together to make sure that they're evenly combined. Then all you need to do is take this, which is nicely warm, not too cold, and just pour this in. It's like beer porridge. Then the final bit of this process, all you need to do is get your hands in and just stir the lot together. If it starts to feel sticky, you're doing the right thing. In fact, stickiness is a really important part of bread making because when you first mix the liquid and the flour together, it will normally be sticky, but don't throw in handfuls of flour. It's absolutely the worst thing you can do. What you've got to do is just mix it all together like this. Scrape any remaining from your hands. See, it is sticky. Then cover the bowl and just leave it for 10 minutes. What will happen in that 10 minutes is that the flour will absorb some of the moisture and a lot of the stickiness will just vanish. So the next bit is a little bit of baking heresy. Um, but what I do, I use a little bit of olive oil for my kneading. And the way I do it, I put a spoonful of olive oil on the work surface, a spoonful of olive oil on top of the dough, and a tiny smidgen in my hands, like that much. Rub my hands together to get them really oily. Rub on the work surface, an area about 30 centimetres in diameter. And I pat the rest of the oil on top of the dough. Give it a quarter turn, fold the dough towards you, push it away, quarter turn. It's just a very gentle rocking and folding and that's absolutely sufficient. It doesn't need more than that. Again, this goes against the grain but I need it for 10 seconds every 10 minutes and repeat that twice more. Now once you've left the dough to rise, just take it out of the bowl. You can always check whether it's ready after rising by making a slight cut into it and you'll be able to see if there's aeration inside, whether it's ready to go. So then for large rolls, the sort of rolls that we're going to make now, cut off pieces that are about 200 and, between 200 to 250 grams each. Uh, put a sheet of kitchen towel or a, a J cloth and then just a little bit of water. Then on the other plate, you'd put your seeds or your oats or whatever you're going to use. So here, I'll cover this one with oats. A little bit of flour in your hands. Fold this over. And get it to about, well, it's about 30 centimetres, about a, a foot long. Onto the wet cloth. Then into the oats. And you can see the oats are going to really stick onto this. Then stretch that piece out and twist it into a neat looking roll. So then just put the tray inside the plastic bag and then just leave this in a warmish place for about an hour, hour and a half. And then when they've doubled, it, doubled in size, we'll bake them. Okay, as soon as the kettle comes to the boil, Quickly open the oven door and pour the water. Then uncover your tray. These look lovely. Get 
your bread in and shut the door and don't do anything. Because of all the sugar that's, that's in the mixture, because of the, the, the malt in, in the beer, they color really quickly. So leave it for 10 minutes, don't do anything. And then after that, reduce the heat to 180 and let them cook for about another 10 to 15 minutes and there'll be a beautiful, beautiful color on the outside. So we'll check on them and see what they're like. I think they look really good. They're not, they're a little bit singed on top, but you don't want them more than that. Mmm, mm. you can smell the stout, a little bit of butter, possibly a little bit of honey in the aroma, and eat them when they're cold. They're beautiful that way.